Episode 207, Dress for a Date Mrs. Wellesley, I would like to deeply apologize for the inconvenience. Please accept a 30% discount on everything you buy today from the mall. We sincerely hope to see you here again in the future. Mr. Lawson gave a slight bow as he looked at Siri. For her part, Siri merely nodded indifferently and walked away, with Dorothy close behind her. Who was that woman? Dorothy asked once they were alone. Siri sighed. Just a delusional bitch who thinks she can destroy my marriage with Alan by creating a misunderstanding. What she doesn't know is that we've been through too much to let some petty misunderstanding ruin us. She shrugged. Even though she was curious about Alan's ex, she didn't feel hurt or angry that he had hidden this part of his history. He probably has his reasons for that, she thought, and he's probably looking at the time right now, counting down the seconds until he can see me to explain it all. What Siri loved most about Alan was his honesty and how much he trusted her. In that, he was very different from Raphael, she mused. As soon as she thought about Raphael, Siri's face fell. It had been a long time since their last meeting, but he hadn't done anything in the meantime. Siri found his quietness suspicious. What is he planning? She wondered. Or has he finally moved on? Siri, are you listening to me? Dorothy asked, seeing her friend looking zoned out. Oh, what did you say? Siri asked as they approached the Chanel store. I said, it's great that you and Alan fully trust each other. It's rare to see that among couples nowadays. Well, he hasn't done anything for me not to trust him, Siri replied. They entered the shop. An employee immediately greeted them. Hello, and welcome to our store. How may I help you? We just want to browse on our own, Siri said. The saleswoman nodded respectfully. No problem. If you need anything, just let one of us know she said. She walked away but continued stealing glances at the two women. Who are these people who made the mall's manager sound so nervous on the phone? She wondered. Mr. Lawson had called the Chanel store a few minutes before, ordering all staff members to show as much respect as possible to these two valued customers. Dorothy followed Siri to the section of the store where the clothes were located. After rummaging through a number of lines, Siri picked out a couple of very expensive dresses for her friend. The dresses were beautiful and looked so luxurious that Dorothy felt that she couldn't accept them as a gift. She first tried to refuse them when Siri asked her to try them on, but eventually relented. When Siri had paid for the one Dorothy wanted, the two friends quickly left the mall. Siri wanted Dorothy to have time to relax before her big night. As soon as they reached Dorothy's apartment, they started preparations for Dorothy's date that evening. Dorothy took a shower while Siri prepared the outfit. Dorothy couldn't help but examine herself in the mirror as she waited for the water to heat up. She was nervous about the date. What if he doesn't like me? She worried. Taking a deep breath, she let her towel fall and entered the shower. She closed her eyes, enjoying the hot water running down her skin. She then took a handful of her favorite lavender-scented shampoo and massaged it into her hair. When she finished pampering herself, Dorothy left the shower, wrapped herself in the towel, and went to her bedroom. Siri was standing with one hand on her hip, the other holding her chin. Her brow was furrowed in deep thought as she stared at the three outfits laid out on the bed. She strongly suspected that Peter would wear a suit, so she wanted Dorothy to wear something simple yet elegant, something that would show off her figure. After a few moments, she beamed and approvingly picked up one of the dresses. She couldn't wait to see Peter's face when he saw Dorothy wearing a dress like that. Are you done? Dorothy said when she entered the room. Yes, I'm done. Now, let's make you the prettiest woman in Boston. Siri giggled excitedly. She felt as giddy as a teenager. Wow, I didn't know you were this pretty. Siri gushed. Dorothy looked gorgeous. She could barely recognize herself in the mirror. I have to admit, I do look a bit like an Instagram model, Dorothy said, and the two laughed. She blinked away the tears that were threatening to fall. Never in her wildest dreams had she imagined that she would wear such expensive clothes one day. I can't ever thank you enough, Siri. You're making me feel like Cinderella tonight. 
She looked in the mirror again and let out a nervous chuckle. Do you think he'll like me? She asked as she played with her fingers. Sari grabbed Dorothy's hand and gave it a small squeeze. Of course he will. Look at you. You're a real catch. He'll definitely like you. And if he doesn't, it's his loss if he loses a gorgeous woman like you. The sound of the doorbell ringing interrupted their conversation. Well, it seems your date is here. Are you ready? Siri winked at Dorothy, who blushed. Episode 208 Cinderella Meets Prince Charming Peter stared at his reflection in the mirror. He thought he looked handsome, but he wasn't sure if he was ready to go on a date. Is this the first step I need to take to let go of the woman I've secretly been in love with for years? He thought. Is this the moment in which I'm going to start a new chapter in my life and find love again? He took a deep breath and told himself not to rush. Trust the process. Take one step at a time. At that moment, a voice behind him spoke. I have to say, you look rather dashing. You look as ready as you'll ever be for your date. It was his father. Peter looked at his father's reflection in the mirror. He was leaning against the doorframe, looking benignly at his son. Aren't you supposed to be on a business trip? Peter asked. His father merely smiled and moved into the room. When he reached his son, he stood beside him and patted his shoulder. You look so handsome. You're clearly carrying my jeans. Peter smiled sheepishly. What is it that you want to say, Dad? Stop beating around the bush. He moved away from his father and sat on the bed. Peter's father spoke up again. I'm just happy that you finally decided to move on. I've watched you waste your life all these years over a woman who can never be yours. Peter found his father's words cruel. He felt as crushed as if he had been slapped across the face. He pursed his lips into a thin line and parted them to say something, but closed them at the last moment. His father took the opportunity to speak again. You know, it's none of my business what girl you choose. As long as she makes you happy, you'll have my blessing. You're my only son, and it's time you settle down. You're not getting any younger, you know. Peter stood up from the bed and straightened his tie. It's time to go. See you later, Dad. With that, he walked out of the room and went to his car. Once inside, he looked at the address Siri had sent him. Twenty minutes later, he had reached the address and saw it was a simple apartment. After parking, he rang the doorbell. He glanced around as he waited for the door to open, and when it did, he saw someone he wasn't expecting. It was Siri. She immediately gave him a friendly hug. Hello to you too, Siri, Peter said. Siri pulled away laughing. Still the same old Peter. She looked at what he was holding. Is that a rose? Peter, I didn't know you were such a romantic. Peter shrugged and smiled. She's so beautiful, he thought. Too bad she isn't mine. Okay, now it's time to focus, and it's time to move on. Let's go meet your date, Siri said cheerily, oblivious to Peter's thoughts. She grabbed his arm and steered him inside. When they reached the apartment, Siri introduced Dorothy and Peter. Dorothy stood stock still in the middle of the room as if in a trance, gaping at Peter. Siri smirked. She knew her friend was salivating at the sight of him, and she couldn't blame her. Peter was at his handsome best. He was wearing a black Armani suit that fit him perfectly. He looked as if he had just come from a photo shoot. Peter, this is my best friend Dorothy, Siri said. Peter smiled, revealing the dimples in his cheeks. Dorothy caught her breath. Siri spoke up again. Dorothy, this is Peter, another one of my best friends. Peter finally looked at length at Dorothy and he was enraptured. She's so beautiful, he thought in delight. It was the first time he had found a woman other than Siri to be beautiful. Dorothy was wearing an elegant and feminine dress featuring an off-shoulder design with a beautiful black lace overlay. It reached down to her knees and fit her figure perfectly. Peter was gratified to note that it wasn't a revealing outfit like those worn by most of the girls who had tried to seduce him over the past few years. Dorothy's hair, which was usually pulled back in a bun, flowed freely past her shoulders and cascaded down her back. Peter swallowed and licked his lips nervously as they locked eyes. He saw a faint blush taint her cheeks. Here, this is for you, 
He took a step forward and offered Dorothy the rose he had brought. Dorothy blushed as she accepted it. Thank you. She mumbled as she lifted it to her nose. Peter's eyes roamed her body. You look really beautiful, Dorothy. Dorothy batted her eyelashes in surprise. Oh, thank you. You look handsome, too. Siri had had enough. Okay, you two. Stop flirting in front of me and leave already. So, Dorothy, shall we go? Peter asked politely. His deep, attractive voice sent a shiver along Dorothy's spine. She avoided his gaze and nodded. Okay, let's go, Peter said decisively. Remember to bring Cinderella home early, Peter, Siri said. That's before midnight or the magic will disappear. Peter smiled in amusement. I will do your bidding, madam. Dorothy was too overcome to do anything but smile. Siri hadn't finished speaking. And you, Cinderella, have fun with Prince Charming, but do your bit to make sure you come home before midnight. She smiled to herself as she watched them walk toward the car. Just as she was about to turn around and go back into the apartment, she stopped to look at the couple one last time. To her surprise, Peter was leaning against the car and staring back. His eyes were boring into her. Episode 209 Proof of Love As Siri looked at her husband, she remembered what Susie had told her about his ex-girlfriend, and her expression changed to one of nonchalance. Without saying a word, she walked into her office and picked up her purse. She locked Dorothy's door and placed the key under the plant pot where Dorothy had told her to leave it. Siri walked toward Alan, who reached out for the car door handle as she approached. He opened the passenger door for her, but she stopped and stared at him. Why are you just standing there, wifey? Alan asked, raising his eyebrows and looking at her with a confused expression. Siri could hear the love in his voice, but she narrowed her beautiful eyes, and her long eyelashes brushed her skin as she blinked. Alan was reminded of how pretty she was, and he stepped forward and tried to plant a kiss on the top of her head. Siri turned her face away as if she wanted to avoid him. Huh? What's going on, wifey? Alan asked. Why are you acting like this? Nothing, Siri replied. She got into the car and Alan sighed as he closed her door and walked to the driver's side. He sat down and glanced at Siri. She had already put her seatbelt on and was waiting silently. He frowned again. He had thought she would be excited to see him, but her whole demeanor was completely different from normal. He had never expected the issue of his ex-girlfriend to bother her as much as it seemed to be doing. Do you want to go shopping? He asked. No, Siri said. What about going to get something to eat? No, she repeated. So we just go straight home? Yes, Siri replied. Alan pursed his lips. Siri wasn't using more than one word to answer him. It was clear she was bothered by the issue, and Alan tried to think of how else he could persuade her away from her bad mood. All right then, Alan mumbled. Straight home we go. He decided he would stay silent for a little while in the hope that it would calm her down. The silence in the car during the drive home was unbearable, and it made Alan want to scream at the top of his lungs just to break it. He parked in the garage, and as soon as the car had stopped, Siri unbuckled her seatbelt and got out, leaving him alone. Alan felt like a wave of pain had gripped his heart. He hated the fact his wife had been ignoring him since he had picked her up, and he felt wronged because of it. He desperately wanted to make things right between them again so they can make up. Siri walked toward the front door, and Alan got out of the car and quickly followed her. As soon as she had entered the code into the number pad, Alan followed her in and caught her by the wrist. Siri was surprised, but Alan took hold of her shoulders and gently turned her to face him. "'What's wrong, darling?' he said. Siri averted her gaze and pouted like a child. Alan chuckled to himself. He enjoyed seeing his wife with what looked like a jealous expression on her beautiful face. He wanted to ask her if that was what she was feeling, but he didn't dare to. Are you angry with me? He asked instead. No, Siri replied. She is jealous, Alan thought as he pulled Siri forward and kissed her. Siri felt her heart swooning at how sweet her husband was being, but she maintained her act of indifference. 
Alan sighed as he stroked her hair for a moment before kissing the top of her head. I dated Hillary when I was 25, he said. We dated for three years, but two years ago she just broke up with me out of the blue, okay? Siri rolled her eyes. I wasn't asking, she mumbled. Alan was determined to placate her, and he sighed before trying again. She left me on the same day that my brother died. Siri's bad mood disappeared immediately. She looked at him guiltily, realizing she had been acting jealous and childish. She had no idea the topic of his ex-girlfriend would be so closely linked to the sensitive and difficult memory of his brother's death. I'm sorry, Siri said, showing him the guilt in her eyes. I shouldn't have acted like that, she added, mumbling. Alan laughed and shook his head. It's okay, he said. Seeing you jealous like that makes me realize how much you love me, wifey. I can see that you love me very much. He winked at her, and she rolled her eyes again, forcing herself not to laugh. You're delusional, she said. Alan took Siri's face in his hands and stroked her cheeks with his thumbs as he looked at her lovingly. You have nothing to worry about, he said reassuringly, his eyes fixed on hers. We never loved each other. We were just best friends. I promise that you were the only woman I love. There's no one else. Alan's words made Siri giddy, and she felt like a child again. She pouted and narrowed her eyes, making him laugh. Really? he asked. Are you really doubting your husband's love? He pulled her closer so there was no space between them and rested his forehead against hers. Do you want me to prove to you how much I love you? He whispered, his voice low and sultry. Siri felt his hot breath on her lips and she laughed. I think I know just how to do it, Alan said, picking her up in his arms and heading toward the bedroom. Siri wrapped her arms around his neck. Stop it, she said. I have some work I need to do for the launch. There are documents I need to finalize. She wanted to sound like she was scolding him, but her voice sounded playful and light. Alan ignored her and grinned from ear to ear before kissing her on the lips to stop her from saying anything else. He had only one thing on his mind. He wanted to make sure that Siri knew what he felt for her. The documents can wait, he said, walking into the bedroom. I have to prove to my jealous wife just how much I love her. Episode 210 First Date Peter opened the car door for Dorothy as their eyes met. They smiled at each other, and Dorothy gave him a small nod to acknowledge his gentlemanlike gesture. Thank you, she said. My pleasure, Peter replied. Dorothy got in, and Peter shut her door before walking around the car and getting into the driver's seat. They buckled their seatbelts and Peter started the car. The restaurant was only five minutes away and the drive was quiet. Peter pulled up outside the restaurant and got out of the car. He rushed around and opened Dorothy's door. Your keys, sir, the valet said, greeting them. Peter nodded and handed them over and the valet quickly got in and drove away to park the car. Peter smiled at Dorothy, who was standing beside him. He held out his arm and Dorothy smiled back shyly as she took it. They headed to the entrance. As soon as they walked inside, they stopped and marveled at the glamorous restaurant. The interior was brightly lit and lavishly decorated with gold furnishings, and from the way the other diners were dressed, it was clear they were from very affluent families. Your table is ready, Mr. Arnold, if you and your date would like to follow me, the waitress said, making them both smile. Peter nodded. Yes, thank you. Lead the way, he said. Dorothy could feel butterflies in her stomach as her heart began to beat faster. They followed the waitress as she led them to a table by the window. Wow, Dorothy said, gasping. The view was breathtaking, and she felt captivated as she stared out at the city lights. The skyscrapers rose up from the horizon, and their lights looked like shining stars suspended from the heavens. Peter looked at her expression of wonder and beamed, happy that all his hard work preparing for their date had paid off. He pulled out her chair and cleared his throat, trying to get her attention. She looked at him, and he gestured for her to sit down. Milady, he said. Dorothy giggled at the idea of him calling her a lady. 
She sat down as gracefully as she could, and Peter took a seat opposite her. Their eyes locked together as they spoke. I have to say, Mr. Arnold, Dorothy said, the view from here is pretty spectacular. Peter was happy with her compliment, and he winked at her. You flatter me, Miss Palmer. But a spectacular view is required for such a spectacular woman, you see. Dorothy smiled, showing off her perfect teeth. Peter smiled back. Peter had already chosen their dishes in advance, and a waiter came over with their wine. Thank you for choosing our restaurant for your meal tonight, Mr. Arnold, he said, pouring them each a glass and smiling politely. We will be serving you three of our finest courses tonight as chosen by yourself, sir. We hope you both enjoy the food and you have a wonderful evening. Dorothy and Peter smiled back at the waiter. Thank you for having us, Peter said. The waiter nodded before leaving them and headed to the kitchen. Dorothy picked up her wine and took a small sip as she looked at Peter shyly. He was incredibly handsome and just looking at him made her heart swoon. But she could also tell by the way he talked and acted that he was a gentleman and a smooth one at that. It only made her want to get to know him more. Peter was thinking the same thing. He had decided he was going to move on from the woman he had loved for such a long time. And the minute he had set eyes on Dorothy, he had been taken aback to find he could meet another beautiful woman. They sat in silence with their thoughts for a little while. After a few moments, Dorothy put her glass down. Her heart was racing and she started to feel a little uncomfortable. She didn't want to sound awkward and her mind struggled to find something to say. What should we talk about? She thought. Should I be the one to start the conversation? Or would that make it seem like I'm not hard to get? Is that what he would think? Peter could see her discomfort as if it were a dark cloud above her head. He chuckled, breaking Dorothy away from her thoughts. Are you worried about making a bad impression? He asked. What? I... Dorothy said, stammering a little. She felt her face becoming hot, and she could tell that she was blushing. Peter watched as her cheeks turned pink and grinned as he thought about how cute she looked. Although they had only just met, he had an urge to tease her. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to hit the bullseye, he said jokingly. Dorothy realized that he was teasing her and rolled her eyes. But then again, I could be wrong. Peter added. Dorothy smiled. Oh, you could be right, Mr. Arnold, she replied, feeling more relaxed. But I'm also wondering if you could really make the woman in front of you happy. Oh, Peter said, grinning widely and letting his teeth show. He was happy to see that she was able to return his teasing in kind. I'll gladly take the challenge, Miss Palmer. The two of them laughed and any traces of awkwardness between them disappeared. The atmosphere became lighter and the conversation flowed easily as they settled into what they were sure was going to be a fun evening together. Although it was only their first date, they both secretly hoped it would be the first of many. Episode 211 Nicknames for Loved Ones Laughter rang out from their table as Dorothy and Peter ate their meal together and talked. The awkwardness Dorothy had felt earlier had completely disappeared, and it was as if the two of them had known each other for a long time. They each took a bite of their steak, and Peter chuckled. Tell me more about the animal you're scared of, he said. Dorothy rolled her eyes and shuddered as memories of her childhood fear filled her mind. She had shared with Peter that she loved animals, but there was one in particular that she was afraid of. She hadn't said any more about it, but Peter's curiosity had been piqued. Oh, believe me, Dorothy said, scoffing a little as she let out a small giggle. You won't believe me if I told you what happened. Peter was already grinning. He could tell the story was going to be good. Just say it, he said, urging her on and making her laugh again as she shook her head. She put her knife and fork down and looked at him. Okay, when I was young... I visited the countryside with my mother for a few days, she said, already capturing Peter's attention. One afternoon, I was out playing with some of the other kids in the fields, and for the first time ever, I saw a horse. Peter narrowed his eyes as he smiled and guessed what was going to happen. Don't tell me you're afraid of horses, 
Dorothy laughed loudly, and Peter knew straight away that he was right. He was captured by her laugh. It was beautiful and contagious, and he began laughing too, as the sound of her voice traveled through the air and to his ears like music. You're right, Dorothy said. She was becoming more animated, and she leaned in closer and narrowed her eyes. Would you like to guess why? She asked. Peter blinked a few times and fell silent for a moment. He tried to think of what could have happened to her, but his mind was blank. I can't think of anything, he said, shrugging. Dorothy leaned back and picked up her glass. She took a sip before continuing. So, I saw a horse for the first time, right? She said, putting the glass down on the table again. It was brown, and its tail had been braided, and I remember that I found that really amusing. Oh, Peter said, grinning again as he listened to her. He was finding her more and more interesting. So, when do you get to the part where you explain why you're scared of them? Hush, Dorothy said, giggling and shaking her head. I'm about to tell you. Peter chuckled as he picked up his own glass and took a sip of his wine. He had only ever been able to have fun and engaging conversations like this with Siri. He had no idea he could enjoy the company of another beautiful woman. So, I was with this other kid, Dorothy said, rolling her eyes. He was my playmate, and it wasn't the first time he had seen a horse. He went to touch it, but the horse was startled, and it almost kicked me. I was startled too, so I fell down on the ground as if it had stomped on me. It was a good thing I was small. I had to curl into a ball to make sure that it wouldn't kill me. When she had finished her story, Peter began to laugh loudly, and Dorothy joined in. Peter was laughing so much that his eyes watered, and he wiped them with a napkin. Dorothy did the same. Now I know what to call you instead of Miss Palmer, Peter said after he had caught his breath. Dorothy tilted her head to one side. Really? And what would that be? She asked. Peter stifled another laugh as he looked at her, his eyes bright. Gigi, he said. Hey, Dorothy said scrunching up her napkin and throwing it at him before laughing too. The two of them were growing closer, and it was hard to believe it was the first time they had spent so much time together. That's slang for horse, right? Dorothy said after she had calmed down. In England it is, yeah, Peter answered. How dare you call me that? Dorothy said. Peter chuckled and looked at her, his eyes gentle and filled with happiness. It's a unique nickname fit for Dorothy. The girl who was afraid of as majestic an animal as a horse. Oh, you, Dorothy said, trailing off and locking eyes with him as she thought for a moment. All right, I'll give you a nickname too, she said. Really? Peter said, grinning again. And what is it that Gigi would like to call me? Pee Pee, Dorothy replied. Sounds quite cute for a man like you, don't you think? The two of them laughed again as they continued to tease each other. As they had suspected at the start of their meal, the evening had been fun and memorable, and they both wondered why they hadn't been on a date earlier. In the blink of an eye, the night was almost over. Peter offered to take Dorothy home, and she happily agreed. As they drove, the atmosphere felt light and relaxed, a contrast to how it had felt on the way to the restaurant. When they reached Dorothy's home, Peter walked her to her front door. Before she opened it, she turned and looked at him with a bright smile. Her heart began to race as she met his gaze. Thank you for driving me home, she said. Peter could feel a warmth in his heart, and he smiled. It's a pleasure, he said. I had such a great time with you. Dorothy felt her heart swoon once again, and she beamed. Me too, she said. Peter held out his hand toward her, and Dorothy looked at it. So, he said, friends? Dorothy giggled as she took his hand and shook it. Friends, she said, noticing his dimples as he smiled at her again. All right, Gigi, he said. I'll see you soon. Good night. Dorothy nodded and bit her lip as she realized their first date had come to an end. Good night, Pee Pee.